what the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Mohammed Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Mohammed Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Green Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Green Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Green Bean Pie. Muhammad Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Brother, sister, rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praises due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, so, Master's Day of Judgment in which we now live, the alone do we serve, and the alone seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he, Allah is one God, Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is there to be served worship to praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is that true servant and last apostle. I mean, we'd like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Brother Salim Shabazz from Florida. We have Brother Muta Kabir Ali from New Jersey. We have Brother Harvey Shabazz from Richmond. We have Sister Amarose Kouquet from Iowa. We have Brother Mustafa and Sister Sharice Ali from Ohio. We have Minister Shaka Senegal from California. We have Brother Waqil Kabir Muhammad from Philly. And we have Sister Tabaya Muhammad from Philly. I just say in the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'd like to greet the brothers and sisters with the nation of Islam, greeting the words of peace of Allah awesome, Alaikum. Today we like to talk about God came in the person July 4th, 1930. This is today is the anniversary of our Savior coming to America. But the black man has difficulty believing that God came to him. When we talk about God coming in the person. We use all kind of excuses about why we don't believe that. But when you look at the black man. The spook worshipers. When they read in the Bible about Moses. And they read how Jehovah helped Moses against Pharaoh. They believe that. They believe that if you read about Jehovah doing what he did for Moses against Pharaoh, then Moses had to be a prophet and Jehovah had to be God. That's right. yes, they say they believe that. Yes, but when you compare Pharaoh to the white man, Pharaoh was a baby devil <laughs> compared to the white man. Yes, if you compare, if you compare the power that Pharaoh had, Compared to the white man, he was a baby devil in his onesies, yes, in a baby bed, yeah. compared to the white man. Yes, but we believe when we read about Jehovah, Pharaoh, and Moses, we say we believe. Mm -hmm. Then if we go even further with Jesus, when we read about what Jesus did in Palestine among them Romans and them Jews, Jesus got to be God. He got to be the son of God. When you read about what God did for Jesus with them Romans and them Jews, he got to be the son of God. Got to be. But them Romans was baby devils compared to the white man. Baby devils drooling in their beard. 
If you take not only the Romans that was in Palestine, if you take the whole Roman Empire and get them say, okay, we're not just going to take them Romans that was in Palestine. We'll give you the whole Roman Empire. Yes, they were still baby devils yes. compared to this white man in America. Yes, right. Then we can go further than that. Talk about Prophet Muhammad. Because all the spook worshiping Sunnis say the messenger Elijah Muhammad couldn't have been a messenger. There's no way he was the messenger of God. But when I read in the Quran 1400 years ago about Prophet Muhammad dealing with the baby devils, yes, them little Arab tribes in Arabia, right. the baby devils. Yes, when I read about what Allah did for him, he got to be the last messenger of Allah. Yes, That's what we say. Mm -hmm. But when John the Revelator saw the white man, he said he saw a beast. That's what he said. He said, who can make war with the beast? That's who the messenger was dealing with. When God came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, July 4th, 1930, this was the time of the beast. This wasn't the time of Pharaoh. This wasn't the time of the Romans. This wasn't the time of them little warring tribes in the rape. This was the time of the beast. Yes. So he came in the purse searching for a messenger. Yes, so we can turn to Malachi uh, 3, verse 1 through 3. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. This is what the Bible says about a messenger. It gives us the qualifications for a messenger so that we can measure. Because when the Bible tells us prophecies, it gives us something with, that we can measure. And when you measure something, you compare something with something else. So it says that I send my messenger to prepare the way before me. Then it goes on to say, it says, but who may abide the day of his coming. And who shall stand when he appears? So it's saying when God come, who going to be worthy to stand before God when he come? That's why we not worthy for Master Farad Muhammad to be in our presence. Yes, we too wicked and evil. Yes, so Master Farad Muhammad can July 4th, 1930, looking for a message. The messenger told us that he became acquainted with Master Farad Muhammad in 1931. He said that Master Farad Muhammad taught him three and a half years. The knowledge of both books, Bible and Holy Quran. He said that Master Farad Muhammad was searching for his lost sheep. He said, we are the lost sheep. The so-called American Negroes. So the Bible giving us the qualifications for a messenger. So we can measure it and compare. It goes on to say. It says, but who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like filler's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Because the people don't know what righteousness is. That's why God has to come yes, sir. before he destroys the wicked. He comes to save the righteous. Right. But the righteous don't know they wicked. The righteous don't know what's righteousness and they don't know what's wickedness. So God raises a messenger. And he purifies those wicked and evil righteous people. This is something that we can measure. This is something that we can compare. We can ask anybody who believe in Jesus, Moses, Prophet Muhammad. What did they do for their people that the messenger didn't do for us? That's right. What do you do to Allah? Simple question. Let's measure. Let's measure Prophet Muhammad against the messenger. Let's measure Jesus against the messenger. 
Let's measure Moses against the messenger. What did they do that's different than the messenger? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. The messenger meets the qualification of a messenger. Pray due to Allah. The messenger meets the qualifications of a messenger so well. They used to make drawings of the messenger in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. You see at the bottom it says filth of America. Showing all the filth of America. Then it says Islam as taught by Muhammad. Muhammad got the black man in a tub. He got a scrub brush. Cleaning the filthy black man. They do to a lot. Because he will be like fill of soap. And he will refine and purify the black man. But let's go even further than that. Let's talk about these baby devils in the Bible and Holy Quran. So we're going to compare. We're going to compare what John the Revelator said about the beast. And we're going to compare Pharaoh and them to the beast. So John the Revelator. This comes from Revelations 13, 4 through 7. Verse 4 says, and we're starting in the middle. It says, and they worship the beast. Saying, who is likened unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Then it goes on to say, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. This the beast. Pharaoh wasn't given power to overcome the righteous. Not to the extent that the beast was given power to overcome the righteous. The beast was given power over all kindreds, all tongues, and all nations. Pharaoh didn't have that kind of juice. No matter how much you cry when you hear about Jehovah, no matter how much you talk about the most high, Pharaoh did not have the juice that the white man had. Talk about them Romans. The Romans wasn't over all kindreds and tongues and nations. No matter how much you cry about Jesus, no matter how much you pretend like you believe in Jesus, they didn't have that kind of juice. No matter how much you talk about Prophet Muhammad and all that he did, those people did not have the juice. So they was only an example or a sign of the last and the greatest messenger of Allah. Yes, Praise you to Allah. Right. That's so all they want. Right. Because if you believe in them, then you will believe in the messenger. Yes, when you see what the messenger came among us and he did, yes, if you really believed in them, you will believe in the messenger. Yes, right. We can go even further than that. Yes, we can talk about how the white man used to lynch the black man. When you read about Pharaoh, where you read about he was lynching the black man? When you read about the Romans, where was they lynching the black man and burning him at the stake? When was they castrate? When did they do that? We can use a, a real life example to show you the beast. Yes, sir. They talk about Black Wall Street. They said what started that incident a 19 year old brother was walking on the elevator. He tripped and fell into a white woman, a 17 year old girl who was operating the elevator. So they say he assaulted her. That's all they have. You will wait to hear, well, what else did he do? What? To cause them to go that hard on them black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They said that the white man had helicopters and was firebombing the houses. They said they was going in the road on the block and just firebombing the houses on the block. So they say the army with submachine guns standing outside in the street shooting them as they run out of the burning house. That's the beast that the messenger was dealing with. So then they talk about how the devil would take the bodies 
and tie it to the bumpers of their cars and drag them down the street. That's the beast. Pharaoh wasn't doing that. The Romans wasn't doing that. The Arab tribes was not doing that. But they was doing that during the time of the message. To the black man. Destroy a whole city of black people. Murdering hundreds of black people. Just because this brother tripped on the elevator. And bumped into a white woman. That was all the excuse the, black, the white man needed. Then we fast forward to these niggas in America today. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Talking about when Master Farad Muhammad came in 1930. He said a black man was illiterate thing. When the messenger was teaching us about do for self and the black man is the original man. Yes, sir. Black man was illiterate. That's why Elijah Muhammad was able to trick so many black people. We couldn't read and write. We were just foolish, but today we so smart niggas today that we won't go for that. But these same silly Negroes, niggas, and colored boys. I was listening on the radio. I like D.L. Hugh. He talk crazy sometimes. But I think he's sincere. All oh, praise due to Allah. Gotta give it to the bro. I like him. So I listened to his radio show. He was talking about if voting don't really mean nothing. Why would the white man fight so hard to get us to stop voting? But we the smart niggas. We ain't like them niggas in 1930 who was illiterate that the messenger came and tricked. We the smart niggas. We the 2021 niggas. We smarter than them third 1930 niggas. But we don't realize. Voting don't mean nothing. Right. Yes, we do to a lot. Yes, but the white man like harassing niggas. That's, right. That's why he don't want you to vote. Right. He not not want you to vote because vote means something. He know voting don't mean right. nothing. Right. What did it mean when the brother tripped and tripped against the white woman? Right. What did that mean? What did it mean when Emmett Till whistled at the white woman? Right. What did that mean? What did it mean with uh, Mega Evans? What did that mean? It didn't mean nothing. So the white man just like harassing niggas. That's, right. That's what he like. He's a beast. That's, right. That's, right. That's what John the Revelator saw. Yeah. He saw a beast. Right. And he said, who can make war with this beast? Right. He didn't say that about Pharaoh. He didn't say that about the Romans. He didn't say that about them Arab tribes with Prophet Muhammad. He said that about the beast. Right. Yes, sir. The one the messenger was stepping to. That's right. Because the beast had power over the righteous until God came. Right. In the yes, person of Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, they power over the black man was finished. Yes. So the messenger. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the hell he caught. Yeah. We gonna go to Charlotte, North Carolina. We don't have time to talk about everything. So we just choose something to say within our. So Malcolm X was going down to Charlotte to speak. This is in the Charlotte News. It says Malcolm X to speak. It says Muslim cult says number two man here. FBI, city police will keep watch. This the white man warming the black man up. Yes, sir. Letting him know what time it is. Yes, that was how the white man got down in. He wouldn't just kill you for what you did. He'd kill you for what another black person said or did. It didn't make a difference. So he warning all the niggas in Charlotte, this nigga coming, this nigga Malcolm X. Yes, he coming to our city. We don't want to see none of you niggas there. That's what this really says. Yes, this cold language for the niggas. Yeah, that's right. Because they said they used to have signs in down south that would say if you could read, nigga run. If you can't read, run anyway. That was the white man. Yes. So he's speaking codes. He's talking straight to the niggas. Okay, right. now. 
It's nigga on its way down here. We don't want to see none of you niggas there. Because the FBI and the police going to be there. Taking names. Of all the smart niggas who come listen to this Malcolm X. This hate teacher. That's the beast. That's who the messenger had to deal with for the black man. So let's go on even further. Three days later. It says Charlotte must reject hate doctrine spread by Muslims. So the white man turning up to eat. Maybe it's some niggas who ain't understand what we were saying. So maybe we need to reprint this. What you need to do is reject this nigga. We want to hear what niggas is with him and what niggas is against. That's what we want to know. Who would do believe like this nigga believe? You believe we the devil? You believe you going to fight with those niggas saying in my face? You going to fight with who? Who you going to fight with, nigga? So it goes on. Five days later, the niggas came and did what the white man wanted him to do. It says, city Negro leadership speaks wise voice. This is during the time of the message. Because what I hate today, we think that we doing something today. We think if we stand around taking the teachings of the messenger, adding it to our thing, we get popular. The white man ain't doing nothing. We think God with us. God with me to say what I'm saying against the white man. Because the white man don't do nothing. He be just like the messenger used to talk about the movies. They used to have with the black man beating the police. That's to encourage the silly black people to think you can really beat the police. That's all they do. So today the white man is a different kind of man today than he was then. And the messenger taught us why. He said the last trick of the devil would be his womb. Because he can't stop the truth. He couldn't stop the message. Even though he used to stop, he stopped uh, the brother from the NAACP, Mega Epps. He stopped the Black Panther Party. He stopped Dr. King. He stopped every other nigga, but he couldn't stop the message. What he do to Allah? Because God came in person now. When John the Revelator said, who can make war with the beast? The answer is Master Farad Muhammad. What he do to Allah? We've been waiting 6,000 years for the birth of the Savior. Yes, he was born February 26, 1877. Yes, sir. That's, right. That's the birth of God in person. Yes, sir. Praise due to Allah. Yes, he was born in Mecca, mm-hmm. Mecca, Arabia. He came 9,000 miles by himself, yes, sir. searching for the lost black man. When he got here and chose his messenger, it was over for the death. That's right. yes, sir. That was where his death certificate was, certificate was signed. Yes, sir. They just ain't put the dirt on him. Mm-hmm. He in the grave, but they just ain't put the dirt on the white man yet. That's right. But Master Farad Muhammad chose the messenger. That's right. So all the Negroes in uh, Charlotte had to denounce Malcolm. They don't have to do that today. The black man, you can say what you want to say anywhere you want to say it today. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't nobody have to denounce the black people don't even pay you no mind. Right. But when Malcolm came to Charlotte, them white people made you pay mind. Mm-hmm. It's a nigga here who gonna disrupt our law and order with that Islam talk. Yes, with that fight those who fight with you talk. Uh-huh. With that don't drink alcohol and don't eat pork talk. Yes, with that change your name talk. We don't want to hear that. So all you niggas better denounce this nigga. So this is what they said. It says the people of Charlotte, especially their Negro leaders, were more forthright in their feelings. They came right out, right out in public to, and deplored the warped racial statements voiced by this apostle of separatism or separation. It says, the black Muslims, they said, do not represent the feelings, the thoughts, or the aspirations of the Negro people. In Charlotte, the Negro wants nothing more 
than to take his rightful place as a contributor to the general good and welfare of the community. He asked for dignity. He asked for equal opportunity in the finest traditions of his religion. The Negro believes in loving his neighbor. This is what the black man had to do. We don't understand the devil in this day and time. They had what you call the great migration. A black people leaving the south to come to the north. This was more black people left during that time period than any time in American history. Millions of black people came to New York, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, California to get away from this devil down south. That's history. Mm -hmm. These devils used to terrorize right. yes, the black man down. We don't know that today. Regular citizens terrorizing the black man. Yes. Regular devils terrorize the the you the uh the uh National Guard, the army coming, terrorizing the black man. So when the messenger was going down south, because we gotta understand our brothers and sisters, we can call them Uncle Tom's today if we want to. But their life was on the line. Yeah. They real, they children's lives yeah. was on the line. Mm -hmm. So back in this time, it wasn't like with us. Yes, sir. We'll pick up anything. We ain't sacrificing nothing. We'll pick up something that don't make no difference what it is. But as long as we can be the big shot leader for the black man, yes, sir. we'll say some anything. Talk about the devil and say, oh, God with me. Yes, God was with the messenger. The same way God was with Moses. We do to Allah. But the white man changed because he can't stop the truth. So the messenger said, we, the so-called American Negroes, want to be the big boss. He said, that's why we weak. We divided one against the other. Because everybody want to be the leader. He said, a white man sees that. When the truth come to us. Instead of us just accepting the truth, we reject the truth. Then we take the truth and add it to the lie that we like. Mm -hmm. That we was already following before the truth ever came. Yes, sir. So these black people in Charlotte, they had to denounce the Muslims. But the one thing about Master Farad Muhammad, truth is the truth. Right. And he opens the hearts of the people. Pray due to Allah. The message say Allah opens the hearts of the people. No matter what you do. That's what he tell us when we sell it papers. Allah opens the hearts of the people. That's why the message say ask everybody you see. Brother Mike, I'm plenty of time. I done seen brothers that you see them coming. I ain't gonna lie. When you out selling papers, everybody ain't the same. Let's just keep it real. Sometimes you see brothers and oh, here this brother come. Yeah. Brother be drunk. Yeah. You can see a brother arguing with another brother and then he walking over towards you. Yeah. And you looking like, man, God. But you got to act like he just like the other little brother you saw. Like, yeah, yeah. Mama speaks. Yes, Everybody ain't the same. Yeah. But sometimes the meanest looking brother, sometimes the sister that look like she'll turn you down in a New York minute. Be the one to give you twenty dollars. They do to Allah. Give you five dollars. Yeah. Tell you how much they love the message. Yes, that always surprised me. Mm -hmm. What them brothers know about the message? Mm -hmm. You think you giving them something? They telling you about the message. Mm -hmm. That's the black man. Yes, sir. Allah opens the heart of the people. That's right. It's not me or you. Allah opens the heart That's of the people. Right. So right. even. <clears throat> Even though the white man was harassing the black man, killing him if he listened, the black man still had an ear for the truth, a longing for the truth. He wanted the truth. So the white man couldn't stop the messenger. So when we hear about this, why we can't see that the messenger was the messenger? All that he had to go through for you and me, but we can't see he was the messenger. So in 1957, talk about a death. The messenger was writing articles in the Pittsburgh Carrier. 
He was writing articles telling the black man, you are the real chosen people of God. But during this time, the white man was teaching that he the true chosen people of God. Because we, in this new school stuff, we argue with each other. We see these brothers setting up shot arguing with lost founders. But during the time of the messenger, the white man was the one who was the heavyweight champion of the resurrection. Niggas wasn't even coming out in public telling people what they believed. Whatever religion you were, you was over there in the corner practicing your religion. You wasn't coming out in the public. You wasn't challenging the white man. You wasn't doing none of that until the messenger. The messenger came out on the radio. The messenger had temples. The messenger had brothers on every corner, brothers going door to door. Anywhere there was a black man, the messenger was there too. So the messenger, the messenger of Allah, was writing articles in the Pittsburgh Carry. J.B. Stoner was reading the Pittsburgh Carry. Because the white man like harassing niggas. Yes. Pittsburgh Carrier ain't got nothing to do with him. But he reading it just to find what nigga he could harass. Right. So he read the messenger's arc. So he key in on the message. Say, I'm going to start messing with this nigga. See what kind of juice this nigga got. He talking some good talk. So J.B. Stoner wrote an article in to the messenger. The messenger responded to J.B. J.B. and the messenger was going back and forth for two years. From 1957 to 1959. The messenger was spanking J.B. He wasn't used to that. He used to niggas being like the Charlotte brothers. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Uh -huh. But the messenger was different. Right. Because God came in the person. The beast don't have power over the black man no more. That's right. God was with his messenger. Mm -hmm. So black people was reading the articles that the messenger was writing to JB. And they was writing in to the Pittsburgh camp. This is Saturday, April 20th, 1957, Pittsburgh camp. And this is the letter to the editor. It says, once more, of Muhammad's wisdom. It says, regarding the article by J.B. Stoner and the answer by Elijah Muhammad, I would like to thank your newspaper for printing them. Why he got to thank them for printing the news? We, would that go over our head? He thanking them, we thank you for printing it because we know the risk you taking for printing him talking to this devil like that. So we thank you for putting this in the paper. Because most black newspapers wouldn't have a heart to print his, paper, print his article that he talking to this devil like that. So the brother said, we thank you for printing this article. He said, the so-called Christian brother Stoner's piece shows what the whites think of us Americans. Mr. Muhammad speaks like no other man in our day and time. Yes, sir. This the message. All right. It's one 2021. This was 1957. In 1957, Atlanta, Georgia was the home of the Ku Klux Klan. That was headquarters for the Ku Klux Klan. Just like Chicago is the headquarters for the Nation of Islam. Atlanta, Georgia was the headquarters for the Ku Klux Klan. You got this black man, the messenger of Allah, talking crazy. To J.B. Stone. Go read them articles the messenger was responding to J.B. Stone. And think this was 1957. Right, right. So another person says, Mr. Muhammad speaks truth. It says, after reading the article which J.B. Stoner wrote to Mr. Muhammad, I now believe that Mr. Muhammad speaks is 100% truth. Yes, Pray to do to Allah. Yes, Allah opens the hearts of the people. Even though J.B. Stoner harassing black people, the truth is the truth. That's right. And Allah opened the hearts of the people to the truth. That's right. And the white man couldn't stop the message. That's right. yes, sir. So in 1959, old J.B., he ain't used to black people agreeing with a nigga over him. He ain't used to that. He used to talking about a black man and all black people say, we with you, Mr. White Man. But the black man was enjoying how the messenger was whooping on JB. Yes, sir. 
So JB started to threaten the message. This is the part I like. I like to read where people used to take the messenger for some small time chunk. I like it. I like to read how the messenger responded to them devils who thought he was a chunk. So JB threatened the message. Told him he was going to hurt some of the believers in Atlanta. So the messenger responded to JB. And what you will notice when you read the history of the Muslims, whenever you hear a Muslim say, we are peaceful people, that means they about to fight. We do tell us. That's what I noticed after years of reading this history. If you heard a Muslim say, we are peaceful people, that's the end of the road. That was the end of the road. Because the messenger said a crafty snake will attack you from behind. Without you knowing. But he said a rattlesnake. He warns you before he strikes you. Because his rattle is his warm. So whenever you heard a Muslim say, we are peaceful people. That was that rattle from that rattlesnake. You, you exceed the limits. That's what the messenger told old JB. He said, we are peaceful people. He said, but if you attack me or my father, he said, Allah will baptize you in other than peace. He do to Allah. I like reading that. I love to read how the messenger put them devils in check. I love to read how the messenger had an army of black brothers who was with him. I love reading that. Because when you read the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, this says, Elijah Muhammad invades his land. Yes, sir. Not only did the messenger tell this devil, Allah baptize you. Uh-huh. Nothing in peace. He stepped to J.B. Stump. Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. He wasn't just talking some talk. He talk. He went down there talking to them same devils yes, sir. who castrating the black man. Yeah. The same devils that's causing the black man to lead the south. The messenger left the north to go down to the south. That's to see what time it is with JB. Yes, so in the paper, it got a section that says the behind the scenes story at Atlanta. This was a showdown. Because black people was reading in the Pittsburgh carrier about all the stuff the messenger was saying. They were like, they was liking the fact that he was getting back with JB. But now it's starting to heat up now. He talking about going down there on JB? All black people had a front row seat to see what's about to happen. So JB and the boys putting in the paper. This is what the behind the scenes say. JB and the boys was putting in the paper. When Elijah Muhammad and the Muslims come down here, we gonna march through they meet. That's old JB now. This nigga think he is coming from Chicago talking to me. We gonna march through these. We gonna show all these Atlanta niggas. He ain't nothing but a nigga too. So we gonna march through the me. So the Muslims, once again, we are peaceful people. But we won't be responsible for what happens if the Ku Klux Klan march and disrupt our meat. The messenger had brothers on both sides of the street for blocks. You see pictures of brothers on top of the build. Yes, Letting J. We read it. Yes, sir. Bring them crackers down here if you want to. Yes, All of them snuff different in coverall wearing pecker woods. Yes, sir. Come on and read meet the real black man. Right. That's how the messenger stepped to JB. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do to Allah. Yes, sir. The messenger had brothers coming all around the country to go down there to help the messenger. Yes, Step to JB. Yes, I know that had to feel good to be a Muslim. Yes, Go down there with some brothers. I don't care if they come. We fighting these devils yes, with the message. Right. So at the top of the article, it says the day the Klan did not march. Yes, so Dave B decided, he said, maybe it might be something more to this Elijah Muhammad than I thought. Yes, because even old JB, who hated niggas, He began to respect the message. That's what you will find. The white man don't love us. 
He didn't love the message. But he respected the message. J.B. Stoner wrote a letter to the NYPD. He was telling them how they making a big mistake on how they dealing with the Muslims in New York. He was telling them, he said, there would be nothing more that I would like to do than to take Elijah Muhammad and hang him from a sycamore tree. I would love to do that. But he said, I got to admit, he's smarter than the rest of these niggas. That's what J.B. said. He said, y'all fools were going up there doing that stuff, lying on this man like that. Yes, sir. Thinking that that's going to turn these black people away. He said, he don't rob his followers. Mm -hmm. That's J.B. bearing witness to the message. Yes. The beast yes. bearing witness to the message. Yes. Telling the black man to write to the devil, you crazy for lying on him like that. Mm -hmm. He don't steal from his followers. He wiser than these other niggas. Right. You having the FBI going in there for you doing the wrong thing. Yes, that was JB. Yeah. Even though he wanted them to win. Right. Like you got to respect this nigga more than you respect him. That's right. He's smarter than that. Mm -hmm. Whatever he say, these niggas listen to him. Mm -hmm. Whatever he say. If he call a meeting, niggas come. Mm -hmm. So you, you wasting your time lying on him talking about he robbing his fuck. Mm -hmm. So let's go on even further to talk about the respect that the messenger had. This comes from the December 18th, 1964, Muhammad Speaks. It says, why messenger Muhammad says, the two must be separated. Yes, there was a white writer for the New York Times who was watching the messenger, just like JB. Because the New York Times and CBS, when they came out with the hate to hate produce, they wasn't talking to the black man about the message. They talking to the white man about the message. Yes. New York Times wasn't no black publication. They informing the white man on the message. Yes, telling them what kind of leader he is. Telling them that you better keep your eye on them niggas in New York. Because this Elijah Muhammad is different from these other niggas. Yes, Everybody said that. Mm -hmm. When you read the history of the message, the one thing you will notice, and this is the one thing I hate about this new school stuff, nobody talked about the messenger without comparing him to everybody else. Mm -hmm. The messenger, when he said Christianity versus Islam, he said to show the black man the success of Islam, you have to point out the failures of Christianity. Right. You can't just talk about how the messenger was this and he had that. You got to compare him to all of these Negroes, niggas, and colored boys today. That's what they all did. Roy Wilkins, another one of my favorites. Because Roy Wilkins was the biggest Uncle Tom during the time of Malcolm X. They used to write articles and cartoons on uh, Roy Wilkins. Mm -hmm. He was in the NAACP, and I think he was sincere too. Yeah. Black people ain't know nothing about no messenger. I didn't know. When I first heard about it, I ain't know nothing about no messenger of Allah. Right. I ain't know nothing about the messenger. Yes, sir. So when I began to read and see what he did, that convinced me about him. Yes. Yes. To Allah. It was the same with Roy Wilkins. When he first saw the messenger, he didn't think nothing of him. Right. He saw his program over the years, though. Mm -hmm. Then he began to defend the messenger. Mm -hmm. The same brother who used to talk against the messenger. Yes, the same brother who used to talk against separation. Mm -hmm. Making the messenger seem like he was talking foolish. Mm -hmm. But about 1970, Roy Wilkins was defending the messenger. But he wasn't just talking about the messenger like he do good things. He was comparing them to everybody else. He talked about the militants. They getting government assistance. They shun work. They talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Yes, Roy Wilkins and the NAACP ain't even accept the teachings of the message. Right. But when them lost files got fired up about the message, they defended him. Yes, so you got this depth. His name, Eric uh, Hoffa. He wrote for the New York Times. 
in his article November 29th of the New York Times, 1964. It says, what the messenger of Allah has done for black people in America was summed up here in a tremendous tribute to the life and teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the and uh, by the freelance feature writer for the New York Times Eric Hoffer who stated alone of all the Negro leaders Elijah Muhammad has a vivid awareness of the vital need of a new birth in any drastic human transformation and he alone has mastered the technique of staging a new identity this the beast talking about the message the beast recognized the message yes, sir. but the black man don't mm -hmm. the black man is a spook worship yep. you believe in a spook mm -hmm. but the rest of the world who believes in the true and living God know that God is not a spook when they read about what Jesus did and they read about the messenger they see the exact same thing yeah. Because Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Yes, but he said, you will know them by their fruits. Yeah. So just like you read about the fruits of Jesus, you read about the fruits of Prophet Muhammad, you read about the fruits of Moses, what's the difference in their fruits and the messenger's fruits? Nothing at all. So he goes on to say, he said, if the Negro is to become a new man, Mr. Hoffa said he must be stripped of his habits, attitudes, opinions, belief, and even memories. He needs a new way of life, a new diet, a new way of dressing, a new purpose, even a new religion, and a new name. The black Muslim movement can point to many solid achievements. It has transformed idol idlers, criminals, junkies, drunkards into clean living pro uh, uh, prosperous human beings. Praise be to Allah. Be to Allah. Yeah. Same thing that the Bible say the messenger where he will be like fill of soap mm -hmm. refining and purifying the black man. Yes, sir. But the messenger taught us because in that verse it's talking about the sons of Levi. That make us think about the Jews. The messenger said, we not mentioned under our name. He said, Israel is used to confuse the black man. So the white man used Israel, Jew, and the sons of Judah and all of that to deceive the black man. Make you think it's talking about the Jews when it's talking about you. But the white man sees it all. This was my most favorite part of this whole article. He now he talking about these Negro leaders. He says, in a burning indictment of the Negro leaders, Mr. Hoffa said, they have little faith in the character and potentialities of the Negro masses. Their words and actions are largely directed towards non-Negro Americans. They are not aware of the Negro masses as a reservoir of power and an instrument of destiny. This the white man looking at all. Y'all don't even see no value in your own people. He went on to say. He was talking about black bourgeoisie class. He said they don't see no value in their brother. He said what they do. Many of them use their brother to gain. To get them more status. Like a politician. He don't care nothing about a nigga. But he come in there to get your vote. So he can be in public office. So he can be the big shot. But he ain't doing nothing to help you. Right. That's what the white man clearly saw. He see it today. Yes. He see Lewis. Yes, sir. He see these Hebrew Israelites. Yes. He see black Christians. He see all of y'all yes. not doing nothing. Yes, sir. That's right. The white man know what leadership is. Yes. He tried to kill the leader. Now he say, let's just leave these niggas alone. They'll fight among themselves. They'll take the truth and mix it up and add it to their garbage that they had that wasn't doing nothing. When this man came on the scene, none of these black people 
was doing nothing when God came in the person. When God came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, he said his wide open fields for the wide awake black man. Yes, he didn't tell us about nobody who was in the way. He said it's wide open. Yes, sir. Nobody was doing nothing. But now after the messenger to everybody, look at what I done did for the black man. Yes, I done been on my post for 64 years. Uh -huh. yes, what about all the other Muslims right. that's been on their post for 64 years? Mm -hmm. God came and chose the messenger. Yeah. Just like he always chooses messengers before he destroy a people. The messenger told us that God came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, July 4th, 1930. Yes, sir. And he is the long awaited Savior, came to save the black man. Yes. Well, brothers and sisters, we don't want to prolong the time. So I'll leave you as I came in the nation of Islam, greeting words of peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. Enjoying the show? Help keep us on the air. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033 to make a donation. Brother Sister, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. So, Master's Day of Judgment in which we now live, Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone seek for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he allows one God, allows he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness, the nuns are to be served, worship, praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. I mean, the honor of Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone that we wouldn't have done it to ourselves and treat everybody right, even the devil. So I'm a like.